and welcome back to The Angry Teacher. I'm Richard Williams, The Angry Teacher, and today we're going to be looking at a little bit more about classroom management. Hang around, we're going to learn today. So we've got all these kids in front of us, uh, possibly different periods of kids, and we don't know what we're doing. We have issues with some of them. These tips are going to help you. There are about six of them. Let's get into it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the little bell for the next Angry Teacher video release. Number one. Now, um, I've kind of inverted my list a little bit, but um, I realized number one needs to be contact parents early. Now, if you see the potential for a problem with a student, a uh, student is not necessarily responding to you well, responding to what you need to do, or need them to do, responding to other kids well, or, you know, just doing what they want to do. I think it's better if you contact the parents early enough to give them a heads up. Now, I'm not picking on your child, but your child seems to not be doing what they need to be doing when I need them to. So kind of help me with that before the year gets to full, you know, in full swing. Okay, so that's number one. Tip number two, by the same token, avoid power struggles. If a child is getting loud and doing, doing the most to get a, a rise out of you, stay calm as much as you can. Kind of say, you know, we can talk about this later or I'm not having a situation with you. Have them removed from the class if you have to. But there are other kids in your room that you need to focus on. So you can either step, have them step outside and handle it or have security come and take them outside or uh, go to a neighboring teacher, whatever it is, and then you handle it afterwards. Make sure this is documented so that if this arises again, you can say this is a pattern or this student just doesn't like when I or this student just doesn't believe in doing whatever it is. But avoid a power struggle, especially in front of of others do it in private if you have to and then lay down the, the, the rule but they need to know that you can't do that in a class always have your agenda consistent now everybody knows when they come into my room there's a class opener there's something to do you need to be seated you need to be with your paper and your pen or pencil ready to go you need to be ready to work once you're in the room when the bell rings you're on task not getting on task. So with that said, if they come in one day and you're, you're, you're focused, you're that teacher that gets them to start working, and then they come in another day and there's not much going on, and they're just chilling, and then it's taking you 20 minutes to get your act together, and then the other day you're late again, or the next day you're really early and you're trying to lay down the law, it's gonna be a problem. So have your agenda be consistent. Whenever they come in, there's always this to do. Or whenever you come in, you always have five minutes to chill and send a final text. Whatever it is that you set up in your room, in your space, let them know that this is how it's going to be all year. We don't fluctuate unless there's dire need for it because they will see that as a sign of weakness on your part and they will pounce. I forgot what number this is, but whatever number it is, paperwork. If a child is consistently problematic, once you call mom and dad, even when you do, make sure you document it. If there's going to be a problem down the line and they call you in, the, the principal calls you in to the, his office and you have the, the, the paperwork, it looks better and it works better in your favor. You're not trying to, to get the kid in trouble or whatever, but you, there needs to be some form of uh, consistent paperwork to show that I'm just not picking on your kid. Your kid is not just acting up at this point. It's always been there. And especially if this child has been doing whatever behavior in other classes, it kind of has a, gives a alert for the people in charge to kind of get the kid some help or figure out what's really going on. Uh, my district has a way of doing it on the grade book. Your districts may have it too, where you can Put it in the notes section. You don't have to actually have actual paper unless it's a referral. How bad? I don't know how bad the infection could be. But if there's a referral, also keep those papers in a folder uh, available when you need it. Um, in the notes section on the gradebook, you can go ahead and type that in. So when you have that parent conference, mom knows that Johnny has been acting up. And I called you several times and nothing was done. So that's why we're here. 
or whatever the situation. Always try to keep paperwork organized and keep it available so that you can take it with you when you're called downstairs. Later in the video, I'm going to tell you one of the reasons I got the moniker, the angry teacher. Hang around, you don't want to miss it. One classroom management technique that actually works is, we talked about it before in several videos, proximity control. But it actually does do something when you move around the room. Now, the lesson might require you to be at the board, especially math teachers, you have to stand by the board and um, write things on the board. But you need to move around at some point. While the kids are thinking, while your teacher thinking out loud, move around so that you are putting out little fires. Put the phone away. Um, stop talking. Um, Johnny, pay attention. Stop doodling on the, 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 your paper. Whatever it is, you need to be moving around, paying attention to all this while the kids are still thinking, while they're working, while they're doing all these things. They know that you're not just going to be stationary in the front of the room or at your desk where I can get away with whatever in the back he's going to be moving around or she's going to be moving around so that actually works move around be a part of your class not at the helm of your class with that said here's what i normally do now this is one of the one of the techniques that and it's not necessarily a technique it's just something that i needed to do and it worked um why they started calling me angry and the angry teacher and whatever it's don't be cool before you can now some of us try to be these kids friends and we try to be the cool teacher before we actually have some street cred you don't know these kids they especially week one they will take advantage and see how far they can get with you stop trying to be so cool that you forgot that they need to have some form of discipline for learning. Learning doesn't happen when you're, you're, you're not focused. Now, learning the way learning looks is different. It, it could be fun, but I have to know that I have to be focused on the task at hand to understand what I'm doing to learn it. So instead of me trying to be that cool teacher, I am really strict in the beginning. A lot of kids, after a while, especially if they've had me more than once, they know that I'm, I'm not that evil ogre. But don't be cool before you can. Don't try to be that teacher who's been in the building for years and kind of set up a, a, a reputation as being the teacher that is such and such. You're not there yet, so build until that part. Now, am I a believer of the don't smile until Thanksgiving theory? Not necessarily, but I understand what they mean. Don't be too laid back. Don't be too lenient until you can be that lenient. You can. The kids will understand, wait a minute, okay, uh, I don't have to be that strict anymore because the kids are starting to respect me. Don't lose respect before you gain it, all right? So those are my tips for classroom management number two, and we'll do some more later. But right now, you got this, all right? Let's... Talk about it in the comments below. Let me know what works for you, what didn't work, and what you want to try. All right?
Thanks for coming to class today. I want you to go out there and be great. Hey, <laughs> go out there and teach. Yeah.